Hello, my miserable friend. Did you forget your anniversary again? This is the second anniversary where you forgot to get your wife a gift. Look at her now. Is work more important than the woman sharing you the burden of life? Not cool. Absolutely not cool. We have to figure this out. What can we do? What can you do? Aha! Got it! Go get some flowers, get down on your knees, and apologize sincerely. No, 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 that's not enough. You're gonna screw it up. How about a trip to Paris? No, that's too expensive. Think, 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 think. How about we go back in time, we get your wife gifts for both anniversaries, fix your relationship, and avoid a devastating divorce. Yes, brilliant! But wait a second. How are we gonna pull this one off? How about we go to a witch? Oh. They don't exist. How about the time stone from Thanos? Also, no, that purple giant is gonna kill one of us to make it perfectly balanced. <sighs> Our only option is science. Let's see what it says. The first scientist to explain time travel based on science, not philosophy, was Isaac Newton. He said time is like an arrow. Once it's fired, there's no going back. And it passes simultaneously throughout the universe. One second on Earth is the same second on Mars. Time travel is impossible for Newton. Such great help, Isaac. I wish the whole tree fell on you, not just the apple. Come on, let's find another scientist. I once heard of a German dude called Albert Einstein. Let's see what he says. This Einstein dude introduced his revolutionary theory, special relativity, in 1905, which completely changed our conception of time. He said time is different from one system to another, from planet to planet. For example, one regular Sunday with the friends equals 243 days on Venus. Now that is crazy. But why? Simply because Venus is very close to the sun, which gives it very strong gravity. Very strong gravity means very slow time. I know it's getting complicated, but this is where things get exciting. If you had a twin brother, both of you are 20 years old. You went on a mission to Venus for 10 years, while your brother stayed on Earth. For you on Venus, 10 years are 10 years. By the time you're back, you will be 30. But for your brother, he'll be 65 years old or so. Whoa, are you saying that scene in Interstellar with a seven years per hour planet is real? Oh yeah, this is known as time dilation. Time can expand or shrink with the help of two factors. First one is gravity, like we discussed earlier, and the second is speed. The faster you go, the slower time goes as well. The best experiment which proved this was in a study published in the famous Scientific American 2014 in the GSI Helmholtz Center using two units of lithium ions. One of them is stationary, the other one's traveling super fast, and they measured electrons hopping between energy levels in both units. The stationary electrons were hopping regularly, but in the accelerated unit, electrons were hopping slower. Hey, I'm trying to fix your problem and you're sleeping? Okay, time shrinks and expands, but you haven't mentioned going back in time and I'm tired of sleeping on the couch. Can't you see I'm doing my best in here? Although Albert Einstein's special relativity did not exactly say that time traveling is possible, other sci-fi writers theorized, by the way, theorizing is the elegant scientific way of guessing. Is it bad to guess though? Of course not. Scientists make a guess and then try to prove it. So this is how it works. Long story short, those sci-fi writers said, if time slows when things travel at nearly the speed of light, that means when it reaches the speed of light, time most likely will stand still. And it even gets crazier. If you go faster than light, then maybe, just maybe, you'll go back in time. Ah, finally, I'll save my marriage. Uh, there's a slight problem, or actually two. First one is light is super duper fast. It's the fastest thing there is, and its speed does not decrease nor increase. Just for you to understand how fast light is. Your speedy, fast and furious friend who goes 150 miles per hour on the freeway, light travels at 600 million miles an hour. 
Wow! The second problem is that you're fat, my friend. Not fat as in obese, but fat as in you've got mass. Objects with mass are very hard to accelerate, especially to the speed of light. It's possible to get an electron to almost the speed of light because electrons are almost massless, but it never reached it simply because you would need infinite energy, which is impossible to obtain. So for the time being, unfortunately, there's no way for us humans to travel through time. The famous physicist Stephen Hawking said, the best evidence we have that time travel is not possible and it never will be, is that we have not been invaded by hordes of tourists from the future. But who knows, maybe in the future, we will invent a technology that allows us to travel to yesterday and change the past or tomorrow to explore the future. I think you're gonna have to take your chances in apologizing. Try to cry, uh, be a little convincing. And now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go sunbathe on Venus. Hey, like, share and subscribe. And resources, resources.